that was the full red pill for me where I understood the Democratic Party is trying to destroy our country. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't love the GOP. And I haven't voted for Trump yet. Yeah. But I think the MAGA America First crowd is the only thing that can save our country. I am Lutch, a.k.a. The Indian Jesus. And I am a secular conservative, but I would love to be on your team. If I could just tell you my story really quick, I think we can open the conservative party to a lot of people who should already be on our team. You know, I was born in the Catholic Church. I was confirmed in the Methodist Church. Up until I was in college, religion was all I knew. Religion was everything. And it wasn't until I started looking into psychology and philosophy and I fell away from religion. But I still had a lot of respect for the values of Christianity. Now, don't get me wrong. I definitely went through a militant atheist phase. I was telling people they were stupid for believing in God and they shouldn't do this. And, they, and I, most atheists who came out of religion didn't have that phase. But eventually, we come to realize Christians aren't bad people. Of course not. Most Christians are awesome people. So why aren't we on the same team? Now, when I was a kid, you know, I, I, I was not into politics. I knew that I didn't trust the government listening to some anti-flag CDs. But other than that, I did not know what was going on. I had opinions on the issues, but I didn't know anything about politics itself. Funny little story. My freshman year in college, I was walking back from my friend's dorm to my own, and there was a bunch of people, brisk fall night, everybody's celebrating. I had no idea what's going on. Not till later that night do I find out, oh, that was the night America got its first black president. That's how out of touch I was. And that continued for, for years. You know, I was just doing my thing, uh, being that angry atheist, not paying attention to anything except myself. And uh, as I continued to learn about my own brain and the brains of other people and philosophy, morality of myself and other people, I was able to rebuild that structure. And I was able to see how similar that moral structure was to the religion that I had left. Now, I'm, of course, I still don't have the dogmatic belief. I don't believe in a God. There could be a God. I don't know. But I don't live my life in the way that there is or there is not a God. And I know to some of you that might be very offensive, but hear me out. I believe that in order for our society to run, we need to all coalesce around values like family, community, grace, tradition, merit, capitalism, all these kinds of things. Now, find those things in Christianity too. It seems like we're on the same team. So if I got here from moral philosophy and you got here from the Bible, why can't we work together? Because I'll tell you what, there is a huge cohort of people who definitely don't like the Bible, but they're not even trying to develop a moral structure. They've just thrown it all out. They threw out the baby with the bathwater. And it's hard to blame them as somebody who doesn't believe in the truth claims. But that's neither here nor there. The fact is, these are people who care about our country, who we are saying you are not on our team because of things that you believe, even though you have the right values. Who is that helping? The Democratic Party, that's for sure. Now, eventually I figured, you know, I should start paying attention to politics. And I was a big brain. I'm like, okay, let me watch CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News, and I'll get the full story. And this is right around 2015 when Trump is coming down the escalator. And I'm thinking they gotta get the full story between the three full stations, right? That's all, that's all there is. Of course, I know better now, but at the time, it had led me to being a Bernie bro. I was so excited to vote for Bernie Sanders in 2016. But of course, we all saw what the DNC did, and I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. The news people told me that if Donald Trump becomes the president, the world will end. So I did what I had to do, or what they made me feel like I had to do, and I cast a vote for Hillary Clinton. And, you know, I've, I've been through some stuff. And I say to this day that that is the most shameful thing I've ever done. But then, you know, I was paying attention, waiting for the world to end, and it didn't. I kept seeing more and more things about Trump that I knew weren't true, that people were repeating, and they didn't care that they were lying. And it happened over time, but it was really with Kyle Rittenhouse that was the full red pill for me, where I understood the Democratic Party is trying to destroy our country. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't love the GOP. And I haven't voted for Trump yet. Yeah. But I think the MAGA America First crowd is the only thing that can save our country. And I'll tell you something else. It doesn't matter if Trump wins. If all of the people who are secular individuals 
are told when it comes to conservatism, when it comes to right-wing politics, when it comes to being a Republican, you're not welcome here. If that's what they're told, then it doesn't matter if Donald Trump wins because those people will always associate the Republican Party with hate. I know that most people who are Christians are awesome people. I just happen not to believe in the same things as, as a lot of you guys. But there's a lot of propaganda. There's a lot of rhetoric that tells those people that you hate them. And I'll be honest with you, as an atheist, I've gotten some vitriol from Christians. And because I know what it's like to be a Christian, because I know what it's like to be politically homeless, I didn't let that shake me and say, okay, well, I'm going with the other team. But a lot of people are doing that. So if we want a party that has any relevance to reality, any relevance to the young people, secular people, secular ideas have to be a part of this movement. I think we have something amazing here, guys. But as long as the Republican Party is wrapped around religion and religion only, we will lose. I'm not saying any of you should give up your beliefs. I'm not saying any of you should not practice your faith. All I'm saying is, can I come too? We have the right ideas. Let's not push people away because they believe the wrong things, even if they have the right values. Thank you so much. Once again, I am Lutch, a.k.a. The Indian Jesus, here to resurrect the second coming of common sense. Until next time, guys, I am out of here. Hey, hey, hey. Hello. Hello. Oops. Oh, hang on. There we go. How's it going? It is going very, very well. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yes, of course. It was nice to meet you. It's so funny because I got a message that was hyping you up. She was like, this is the most underrated YouTuber. You got to check him out. And I watched your video and I'm like, I like this guy. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, because I feel like you stand out to me uh, because I think that it's obvious that you are level-headed and open to different kinds of opinions. Uh, and I don't know, you, I feel like you come in good faith and that's so important to me. I feel like, uh, I'm somebody that basically has been studying influence, you know, and, and the, uh, the creator economy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I also was sort of pushed in the political realm, almost not even by choice. Um, and then I realized that even though speaking out about certain things are unpopular, it's very important to, to do so um, if we want to affect change and, uh, you know, influence people in the right direction in, in terms of not doing it just for self-gratification, but, you know, maybe to like leave leave a legacy, leave something behind, uh, uh, make the, the, play, the world a little bit better than it was when we came into it. Uh, but, but tell, you know, tell me who you are and, uh, thank you for joining me today. Yeah. So thank you. I am Lutch, AKA the Indian Jesus. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that, uh, as, as the political landscape is, is shifting so quickly, uh, we need to focus on our skills to be able to understand and talk about that. Because when, when everything is changing so fast, when we're using words that don't really keep up, then we end up being inaccurate. And then we end up talking past each other and then we end up hating each other. And so, uh, uh, you know, my channel focuses on, you know, I'll usually take uh, like one podcast or a debate or a speech or something and uh, uh, break that down and uh, kind of try to highlight like, oh, okay, see this person's doing this. When they say that, that's because they're doing, you know, they want you to think this. And, you know, if they were really thinking this, then, and it, it helps kind of see like, okay, uh, you know, when it comes to a Steven Crowder, this is what I think of this person. When it comes to a Tim Pool, this is what I think of this person. When it comes to somebody on the left, um, I can understand where they're coming from so that I don't have to stay in an echo chamber. I can listen to everybody's opinion and, uh, uh, and, and be inoculated from their biases. And I mean, we're all going to have our own biases, but. You're a very good translator. That's one thing I noticed. And uh, for me, it, it's like my whole life, I've been really good at um, basically, you know, processing information. I, 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 and I think I heard you say that you watch YouTube videos at like really fast speed to kind of just yep. get the gist of it. Yep. But I like to consume a lot of information. And in my brain, I can like connect the dots. 
But when it comes to articulating it, sometimes I get stuck. And what I really appreciated was that you were basically doing a review of the, or a reaction sort of thing to the Tim Pool uh, culture war episode, where it was really the first time I kind of have been back in the public eye at, in a podcast in a live situation. And for me, it was like, okay, I guess we're going to do a debate, which adds even <laughs> a little bit more pressure. Uh, but what I thought was cool was that uh, you were able to articulate to the to your audience and sort of translate what you saw that was going on. And I think I think it's because I think you you're able to process it probably because of your own experiences and uh, your intellect and things like that. But I I do feel and I, this isn't like a, a knock on people that are just like consuming information quickly, but sometimes people are consuming information so fast and with their own bias that they're unwilling to kind of um, even listen to what they're seeing. You know what I'm saying? Like they're right. coming in ready to just fight the person right. that yeah. has opposing view without <clears throat> having any kind of empathy or approaching it with kindness. Like just because somebody has a different political view as you, doesn't mean that they're a terrible, no good, very bad person, right? Yeah. And I think that as when I first started studying influence, uh, I actually wanted to build an app that was kind of like a like Tinder, but for video content that would like inspire you. Ooh. So basically, it, it, you would I wake like up, at, yeah, you'd wake up in the morning and and basically get um, a, you know, a couple videos served to you, and as if it was a mentor that sent it to you like, Oh, Hey, I know you'd like this or, you know, uh, this always happens with this camera. Uh, okay, streaming. We all got a little um, bit of struggle streaming. <laughs> Not a real um, stream until you start right? struggle streaming. Struggle. Yeah. Um, anyway. And so what I, what I, I guess the core foundation before I even got into under, trying to understand politics or the influencer world, because this was before it really influencers existed, um, was this notion that a lot of uh, what influences in the sense of changing someone's perspective or doing something that that changes somebody's behavior, that's really what influences. It's, it's the ability to change someone's behavior or affect, you know, uh, ignite someone to to make uh, take an action, whether that be buying something or changing their perspective, which is obviously a bit harder. Um, but it all stemmed from inspiration. You know, uh, the, right. the easiest way to inspire someone is through inspiration. Another way to inspire someone is through fear. Um, you know, another way to inspire someone is through uh, basically uh, making them feel as though they are uh, either being accepted into a group or being shunned from one, you know, so that can also change, you know, if someone's mean to me and I'm like, I don't like that person because they were mean, then I've changed my behavior because right. of how they approach the situation, you know, or Definitely. they mean gold me out of, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, but I man. think that, um, I don't know, I guess, where did you, I guess we just watched your walk away video and you talked about, um, being a Bernie bro and all that. I mean, I guess you talked about it a little bit, but I guess now that you've been sort of, um, I don't even want to call because people are calling it red pilled. I'm learning all these new Gen Z terms. By I'm the down way. with red pilled. Yeah, I'm. I'm, 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 a, I'm an elder pilled. millennial, but like el red pill can sound as though you're you could be like red pill Andrew Tate or red pill right. like. You I, know, and for a little while, I was kind of <laughs> both. I've definitely distanced myself <laughs> from that version, but uh, okay. you know, red pilling is definitely an, an accurate way uh, to to describe it. Because like I said in the video, I wasn't really paying attention, and even though. I I was opinionated in the sense that like if you were going to be asking me you know about the uh, the child procedure I would have an opinion on that if you were going to ask me about uh, uh, you know wh whatever the case may be I would have an opinion on the issues but in terms of like politics and the politicians and the bills and stuff I never paid attention uh, to any of that and you know you you were talking before about people who you know are just passively paying attention uh, to that stuff. And I think there's two different groups of those people. There's the people who are passively paying attention just because they've got other stuff going on. And then you've got yeah. the people who, like you were saying, are, are, are just taking in whatever they can to, to immediately go and start the fight. And so I, I, I was never really um, uh, a part of that second group. It was just like, this, this is what it is. And like I said, you know, Obama's uh, uh, elected 
And, you know, I went to uh, Ryder University. And so it's uh, mainly the, I mean, I just, I went for uh, psychology, uh, but it's a D1 school and there's no uh, football team. So there's a, a, a really good business school and there's a really uh, good uh, basketball program. So you can kind of tell, for the most part, where uh, 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 which which uh, group somebody is in. And so I saw a bunch of the basketball players outside. I'm just like, what's going on? <laughs> and you know, and, and so yeah, that at, at that point, or not even at that point, you know, I actually uh, uh, got into um, a little bit of a drug addiction uh, then. But after that, when I, I cleaned myself up, um, I was like, yeah, you know, I do care about this stuff, and I I, I need to figure out what's going on here. And, and this was right at the time or right before uh, the, the, um, the understanding that the mainstream media was, was BS was, was so common. It was like, yes, there was definitely people out there, but most normal people assumed that, yeah, if it's on, it's, it's on the news, it's the news. And right. so again, being big brain, I'm going to listen to the left and the right. And it just, I saw that it, it brought me down the wrong road. And so, uh, uh, same thing with, you know, I, I'm also, uh, uh, an atheist, as I said, so same thing, I grew up, uh, 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 Christian. And when I realized that this isn't, this, this doesn't fit, then you got to change your opinion. And, um, so that, that, that's where I'm at is constantly, I think I have some good answers as to, you know, what I, I personally should do moving forward, what the conservative party should do moving forward. Um, but I'm always open to, to put those ideas out there and have them be criticized so I can tweak them because I do think I will fix America. <laughs> I love it. Well, and that's how it starts. I think it's like, you know, now independent media is be becoming more popular, but you know, it, so I guess I kind of started out totally unaware of, of anything political, I guess, in the sense that I just was head down with, um, you know, brand friendly creators. I was, mm. a, I'm a former talent agent. Right. So I wanted to be and, and also Gary, do you know who Gary V is? Oh yeah. Uh, Gary V is like one of my mentors. Mm -hmm. I met him right. really, yeah, so cool. yeah, really before he became super popular. I think I met him in 2009 and you know, he, I mean, people think that he's like gimmicky or maybe fake, but he's not like if, if you meet him in person, he's all about kindness. He's all about, you know, keeping it positive and all these things. And I know he would never really go into politics. And so that's my mentor, right? So I'm like, okay, he does this. So I guess mm -hmm. I'm not going to mess with this other stuff. And because I don't really care, right? I'm like, so I care. That, um, that is, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. That, that's interesting because it, it, it's not like somebody uh, like a Gary V is not aware of what's going on, but in terms of his brand, uh, you know, that if that's not what he wants to focus on, that's especially now where, where, you know, everything's leaked into everything. It's gotta be much, uh, much more difficult to talk about what you want to say without, and, and have to think like, okay, well, I gotta keep it away from this opinion or that opinion. I, I, I that, I, that seems like, I, I mean, as, as frightening as it can be sometimes to, to put your honest opinion out there. Uh, I feel like if I was constantly walking on eggshells, like, Oh, I don't want to offend these people. I don't want to offend these people. I don't care who I offend. That must be difficult. Yeah, and I, I actually don't think that he's worried about offending. I think that he has his plate so full with like, you know, uh, probably all these, you know, things that don't really need to involve politics like and he really understands the different social media platforms and the trends so much that he can really predict what's going to happen because he's actually using them it's really hard to be an expert on any social media platform if you're not a creator um and that's sort of a superpower that i think um i've been able to you know grasp because i was behind the scenes with a lot of different influencers and i was helping them but i guess now that i'm uh you know well, I'm also 40, so it's like I'm not going to be doing silly dances and nor do I want to be doing that. Um, but I, you know, I realize that I can use my skills uh, that I learned basically on how to use the social media platforms to actually have mm -hmm. conversations. But what I found and now I'm kind of like watching the Twitter. I never really used to use Twitter, um, but now that I'm watching sort of how Twitter behaves and stuff, I kind of assume that everybody would come with like good faith arguments and you know um i guess come in with the thought that like how i am i i honestly although i've been burned in the past i still have the general people are inherently good you mm -hmm. know and i don't um assume that somebody is like you know i 
I can tell also when somebody is just blatantly rage baiting, you know, yeah, and I, yeah. it doesn't bother me because I can tell what's going on. It's like, okay, yeah. this is and obvious it's, and it's, it's not super hard to tell when people are willing to have that conversation, but, uh, or just have a conversation versus, you know, just get engagement, especially now that, you know, you can get money for, 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 for tweeting. Uh, it's, it's become like a game. And so you just have to realize like, oh, okay, this is, this is somebody. Uh -oh. Yes, guys, any donation for me or Ari gets Morty a dog treat. Uh, but yeah, the, you just have to, you have to look at the, where these people are coming from. And that's a, again, drawing back to kind of what my channel is about. That's why I like to take uh, uh, long form things and why I also am not necessarily a headline chaser. So I do try to keep things, uh, you know, if I'm covering something, I do try to keep it relevant. Like, you know, uh, I covered, uh, uh, your culture war episode the day it came out. Um, but you know, I've done stuff from a, a year ago, uh, weeks I'm ago getting, uh, for some reason. Oh, sorry. No, it, it was like just um, pausing. Are you getting a, a normal feed? Yep. I'm sorry. Good. Okay. Yeah. It was just. I think I just need to close some windows or <laughs> close some stuff out. My computer is like glitching. Okay. No. Go ahead. Um. Yeah. But I. I mean, just, just yeah, yeah. having that ability to uh to differ to recognize when someone is pushing your buttons because as much as you might show, hey, I'm here in good faith. Number one that's that's you know being served to a troll on a silver platter Ooh, somebody who thinks that you know i can easily get to troll because if i say something they're gonna be like oh well what did i do wrong because i don't want to be you know uh, wrong or mean or this or that and uh so number one is uh identifying those type of people and then the other thing is learning how to phrase things so that you're kind of not troll proof but you're you're keeping that in mind it's so like ah, before you say this i'm caveating here and I, 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 Facebook was my main, my main jump off. I used to write novels on really? uh, Facebook. Oh yeah. And so, I mean, you know, once, once the whole Trump thing came around and everybody just blocked everybody who didn't agree with them, then that was the end of Facebook. But now that Twitter's got these long things. I didn't, I'm, I was like, yeah, I didn't use Twitter that much, but now that I can go off, I'll just go off. I just, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't keep it short. I can't keep it short. Whether it's videos, whether it's writing, whether it's whatever it is, I got a lot to say. <laughs> I don't know why this thing is okay. Let me. Sorry, I'm like it's like glitching out, and I can barely hear you. Maybe What's I have like I think I have like quick quick time player on or something. That's like um. All right. So okay. Well, one of the things that I noticed when I watch your Crowder thing. Oh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I'm not getting uh -oh. any inter any any interference. Interference. Yeah, it says connection is unstable if you're on. Oh yeah, yeah, it says that all the time. Uh, okay. No, the the chat will let you know if we if um, it actually becomes an issue. Just ignore that. I get that all the time, and it's just like, come on, just keep it rolling. Okay, keep all it right. Rolling. Yeah, no, I just can't for some reason. I can't like you're um, delayed or something. So um, let me. Uh, just wondering if I need to like refresh or something. Hang on. I'll turn my echo cancellation. Um, okay, now I'm back. Here. Uh, nope. Or, I mean, I think we're good. So, okay. So when I watched your Steven Crowder video, uh, one of the things that you said that I found to be, uh, I guess like pretty logical is that you're like, you know, I don't like the, this whole thing. Okay. I came over to the side of the aisle or, or at least a little closer to the side of the aisle. You're, I think you said you're like right of center or something like that in terms of your political leanings or is that what you said? I don't want to like put words in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate. That's pretty accurate. Um, but you said what I don't like is, uh, when, when, uh, people that, you know, say something act a different way behind closed doors. And I think that's a pretty universal feeling that people have like you don't want to be influenced by someone and then you find out this person is full of it because that's not even how they live their life right um while i think all you know everybody is flawed in some way shape or form uh it doesn't it, it's the way that something feels right like if somebody is having problems in their marriage but they're a conservative commentator or whatever i feel like people are accepting of that of those things because it's like everybody you know has problems but but it's different if you are portraying those problems like, right. in a different way than what they are or you're treating people you get what i'm saying so yeah, well, i guess explain that cuz i i like I, I liked what you said about that well, and i understood why people 
Yeah. There's two different aspects to it in the sense that, number one, there's people who uh, will tell you things and not tell you to live like them. There, so, like, when it comes to Crowder, I don't think that he necessarily, uh, at least, you know, compared to, like, uh, some of the, you know, Andrew Tate, uh, fresh and fit type stuff, they're not saying, live the way that I live. They're just saying, here's, here's my ideas that I think uh, you would like. And mm -hmm. not that they're not, you know, trying to, to uh, you know, influence you, as you said, but it, it, there's, a, there's a slight difference. So I'm going to judge somebody who says, you should do what I'm doing harder than somebody who says, I stand for these values um, if both of them are not living up to that message. That being said, even if you are not saying, live like me, you know, I, I specifically like, yeah, I am not y'all's role model. Don't, I, I have these ideas, but I'm not telling you to live my, uh, your life like I live my life. That still mm -hmm. doesn't mean that if you saw that, you know, I was uh, 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 stealing money or, or, you know, whatever the case may be, that it, it shouldn't give you pause as to like, should I really be listening to this dude? And right. when you see how much of the, 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 the contradiction between the values espoused and the actions, especially when some of them specifically talk about watch what people do, don't listen to what they say, and then they go and do things that, that don't go with their message, it's uh, uh, it's not only frustrating, but it's it's worrying because you want to feel like you are are on the right path. You're listening to the right people. Uh, you got an array of people, and they're all you know. They might have different opinions, but they're they're all leading you back to this uh, uh, this uh, notion. Hold on, I can let's see if I can turn that up. Uh, how is that <laughs> better? Um, they're all leading you in this direction and they want you to, uh, uh, or rather you want to make sure that when it comes back to, okay, yes, I think that Trump is the best, uh, 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 move in November, then you want to make sure that that is actually the right, uh, conclusion based on what you believe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the other thing too, is that I feel like, um, you know, I don't know, like, okay, so what, what? When you saw this, so, okay, let me actually back up. When you saw the whole Steven Crowder thing go down, um, I guess you're kind of, I mean, in some ways I was, I watched the Jared video and I uh, immediately like, cause I had known about the Daily Wire thing. I was like, oh, this guy's getting karma. I mean, this is good, for, you yeah. know, cause he, he, and I think we had the same um, viewpoint of like, you shouldn't be posting you know, term sheets, it's just bad form. Uh, yeah. You wouldn't do that, especially if they really are your friends. I think what people don't know, realize is just really how competitive and cutthroat it used to be Hollywood, but now it's just like digital media. And uh, it was funny. I was watching PBD and I don't know if he was like feigning ignorance on this, but um, like Dave Rubin was on and he was saying, well, I think maybe Tucker's sort of pushing back on Ben Shapiro because um, he he does believe the things he's pushing back on, but also he would love to kind of take Daily Wire out of its mm. sort of monopoly slot of, of uh, basically having this monopoly on conservative uh, independent on media. What's huh? your take on that? Because I, I, I'm curious on your take on that as somebody who's, you know, kind of been in uh, the, the, the industry as a, you know, not necessarily creator, but, but on the other side of things. Because it seems like there is a not, it doesn't seem like a zero sum game. Like it's, it, it seems like if the Daily Wire is doing well, well and Tucker's um, doing well, then I think that... that. Oh, no, sorry. It's like delayed. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, so, I, I'm just saying, wouldn't that, you know, a rising tide helps all uh, boats. So wouldn't Tucker want to keep a uh, 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 Daily Wire doing well so that the online media space, the online conservative media space is better? I don't, so that in theory is what I hope that people would want to do, but what I've seen from, you know, really what I thought initially was um, the left operates in terms of owning uh, Hollywood, basically. Uh, I, what I saw with my experience was just like, for example, there's a bad article written about me in the New York Times and I'm like, okay, well, this isn't life ruining because I have the truth on my side. So let me just go reach out to other media outlets that talk about uh, the content creator world and they're going to tell my story. 
So really simple, right? Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I'm a Mexican immigrant. I, I immigrated here and, and built this company without any really any money or whatever. So this is a good story. I can I could get my redemption story. And so uh, one of my friends, um, he works in PR. He's a publicist basically for uh, conservative uh, politicians and uh, lawyers and things like that. And anyway, he really understands, obviously, he understood how the whole landscape worked and he goes well here's the problem Ari because I was at first just emailing everybody like hey this really mean journalist wrote a bad story about me full of lies will you you know uh tell my story and I thought you know this it's obvious like I'm a good person like they'll tell the story because I'm nice and I, you know I come across as as honest because I am being honest and he's like well listen you're up against three really difficult things number one there's this conflict of interest with United Talent Agency. And United Talent Agency manages not only hundreds of A-list celebrities, but they manage, uh, you know, television anchors, you know, on ABC, uh, every, you know, CNN, every, even Fox, really I think they have you. a couple people. And then he goes, uh, and then, uh, then you're going to have the people that perhaps they disagree with the New York Times on this one issue, but the media typically they help each other out. So if if telling your story is going to be uh, you know net negative for New York Times and New York Times is friendly with them, then why would they get involved, right? They don't want to stick their neck out. And I'm like, mm. well, that's not right. These are you know this is like the news. Otherwise, how do I get my story? And he's like, well, just that's just how it works. That's okay, right. well, and then he goes, and then here's the other issue. Um, so either the the people are repped by UTA. And by the way, whoever represents you brings in your money. So you don't want to mess with your money if you're, you know, a talent. So, so they're either the journalists are either repped by UTA or they're, you know, friendly with you or they want access to the celebrities that UTA represents. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the UTA issue. Then there's the New York Times issue. And then I started seeing, okay, well, this is a bit kind of starting to seem political, right? Because UTA, like I started noticing, okay, they, it is political. And then it was like, uh, what was the third thing? It was, um, Oh, it was, well, a lot of journalists want to make the New York Times bestseller list. So if they have a book or a book coming out, like they don't want to upset the New York Times. And then at this point, I'm like, okay, something fishy is going on. The people that control all the information are lean one way politically. And even though I don't have any political affiliation and I'm a Mexican woman, I thought that the left supports minorities and women oh well not that's what they want, um think. not in this case right not in this case it's, it's only in selective cases right. when it's convenient for them and that's i guess if it was a red pill or a magenta pill, i don't know what kind of pill it was but that's when i you know started opening my eyes to everything and uh and then the rittenhouse uh trial really opened my eyes as well mm -hmm. although whenever i posted about that like especially on instagram because that's where i mainly posted i mean i think i lost a lot of friends <laughs> like yep. without even doing it on purpose i was just watching i watched every day of the trial yeah, um exactly. through like different youtube accounts and stuff and when you're getting the commentary from lawyers and on all different sides of the aisle i felt like okay this is a very unbiased place to get the information and so but then when i went to like regurgitate that information to my audience it was like they because they hadn't Damn. seen the whole trial yeah and that's the problem right it's like they don't want to listen or uh, people don't want to listen because like you said they're either living their daily lives which most to be honest i think that's like 90 percent of people, people yeah. and uh and so, and yeah, and it, and it becomes like what you said about, oh, you know, the world will end if we vote for Trump or whatever. Um, it's so weird, though, because I don't think it was like that in the Reagan era. I don't know. My, no. I was, I, I've been talking to my dad about it. And he's like, yeah, I just kind of missed those days because it wasn't so it was still kind of like, oh, do you want to bring up politics at the dinner table? But it wasn't. I don't think it was it's like, just what, how would you describe up, what it is up, now? Up. Yeah. It's just exploded, and the the uh, and I think that I think that's a purposeful thing because the default is uh, typically that you're going to be liberal, that 
the messaging of the left is like you just said oh we are for minorities and women and the, those who can't so it sounds you, nice <laughs> right so if you don't know what's behind that message then you're more likely to to uh, 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 to um, you know vote that way and so when there's people who aren't really paying attention and maybe don't really care about that they're definitely going to care about things like their finances and their children and their family and so when you uh, uh, populate the 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 zeitgeist, the you know the, the 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 conversation with all of these culture war issues, then it it uh, 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 makes it very easy to catch those people who aren't uh, uh, paying attention. Now I I agree that you know there's there's the equal you know it's equal it's both sides, um, but there's definitely a difference. Uh, I think that the if you're if you're let's say you consume 10 minutes of news a week you are way more likely to vote for uh, uh to vote blue than you are to vote red that doesn't mean that people who are in the weeds of politics can't be on the left but it, it the, the messaging is just there to to uh, make it so easy to bring in the people who don't know any better and like that's why a lot of people will will say like oh there's real stuff going on why do you care about this why are you talking about that well it's because this is what people care about like i i well, i'm with you i think that you know if we could spend more time talking about the the deficit or the uh, you know infrastructure or this or that that would be better for america but that's not what it is people don't know about that stuff people don't care about that stuff and the way people start to care about that stuff is by giving, uh, you know, uh, showing them that something that they already care about, whether it's the movies that they are watching, or you know, the the curriculum of their children, or uh, uh, you know, immigrants, whatever it is. If you give them a reason to pay attention, then it's like you know, it it, it knocks over the, the the first domino, and it's like, oh, okay, okay, I see what's going on here. Yeah, and I also think that there's like this. I think all of us. I mean, maybe not everybody, but. When I was living in LA, for example, I was sort of developing these uh, social media influencers. And there's this um, sort of wanting to be accepted, right? Like wanting to b belong. And I feel like that's kind of maybe like a human trait, right? Biology, like we wanted to be in a tribe. Um, and it's a lot harder when, you know, you might get eaten by a bear if you're the one that's excluded from the right. tribe. And, but what happens is this like, just acceptance. For example, when I was living in LA, like I said, I, I really didn't even pay attention to politics. I had my hands full with all these kids. I call them kids, but they were <laughs> over 18, but they were kids in my eyes. Um, and uh, for example, when the BLM stuff was going on, it was so wild. Like, first of all, it had, and the influencers know how it works. It works. So there's like these 18 year old kids, 19, 20, whatever in my, in these houses. And it was, I think during lockdowns, uh, and of COVID or whatever. And they, uh, so some of them were going to the whole, they were really into the BLM stuff. And like, I remember they, they posted, I, they were doing it for attention. Like, I don't know if they were even really doing it for, they know what this is about or like, you know, but the, so it would start with a group of, you know, maybe like one or two black influencers and they're like all into it. And then you'd see the other kids basically being like, well, if we don't do this, like we're going to be considered racist basically. Right. And I'm like managing them. I'm like, I don't care what you guys do. And they're like, can we put like a black lives matter thing on the outside of the house? Now thinking back on it, I'm like, I can't believe I let them do that. Uh, but I, I did, yep. I was like, yeah, like go for it. I mean, we're going to look like so accepting to every, cause obviously like I'm a nice person. I want people to feel accepted. I mean, if people saw photos of like my brother is like goes to pride in like a, you know, a thong and like he is happy and gay and I love him. And I have, you know, I mean, a lot of gay friends, like a lot of gay liberal friends, or sorry, and a lot of liberal friends. And it's like, if I talk about my conservative views, like, is it going to hurt their feelings? And thinking about that, it's like, that is so dumb. You That's know what I mean? Goal. But we, but we are afraid. I think some people are afraid to hurt people's feelings that they care about. Mm -hmm. And because we know that the way they're going to, uh, the way a lot of people take stuff is not like, hey, this is just a tough love of exposing the reality right. and common sense. It's like, okay, better not expose reality and common sense because it might hurt someone's feelings. And that's just, if you think about how we, uh, 
you know, move forward as a society and, and do better, you know, like that's not a good thing. No, do you get what not. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I think that, and, and that's totally intentional. That's totally intentional because again, these are people who are not uh, willing, uh, uh, willing or able, let's say willing or able to get in the weeds. And so the, uh, um, the, the, what's the word I'm like, the heuristic, the shortcut is, oh, these are the nice people and these are the mean people. Yes. Yeah. And because it, it, it because of that, then they're th these people are primed to oh if well obviously we're the nice people. So if you think something different, then you must be bad. I don't even have to know what it is that you actually think because I know that I'm a good person. I think this. And if right. Think that's wrong. Then then and internally that is logical. And so th there's no way that it's a, a mistake that 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 this is the the, the platform. And it's it's yep. so difficult to break through because uh, it, it, everything that you can say that will go against the fact that I'm racist or I'm bigoted or I'm this or I'm that mm -hmm. is more proof that like, oh, you're just in, you're in denial or something. Right. And I also think that social media like amplifies all the the, I guess, problems that happen are I think you look at um, what we reward. So right now. I think everybody can agree we're living in like an attention recession. Like there's, you have to pay, there's so much going on. It's like, what is it? Like there's in, infinite um, information, but very little wisdom, you know, and right. we don't know where do we find the wisdom. And that's why initially I want to do that app where it's like, you're not getting, you know, a hundred videos, you just get one or two so that you can consume them, process them and take an action on, on something that's important to you. Right. But, but that's not how the world works right now. We're just drowning in information and, uh, and then on top of that, we're rewarding attention so much to where everybody wants the attention. And so it's, it's, it's supply and demand, right? There's very little attention and everybody wants it. And so when people realize that there's a shortcut to getting attention to by saying like either I'm the victim or like, look at what happened to me. Um, and then we, I think as human beings, like automatically, if we have empathy. It's like if somebody's speaking in a way that makes you feel bad for them, then it's just, if you don't really think about what they're saying, you're inherent, you're inherently like, oh my gosh, like, you know, what, what is this thing that happened to them? Um, and I think people are realizing, especially anybody that really understands social media is that that is a quick way to get attention. And uh, another way is to um, like rage bait, you know, people realize, but you know, I, it always brings me back to like, what is a person's intention? Because if the intention is just to get attention um, or, or is the intention to really, um, you know, change things like uh, things that you're passionate about that you believe will help the world helps society. Yeah, well, you you bring that up, and that's a, a good point. I was just listening to I don't know some uh, somebody talking about uh, uh, Candace Owens and uh, uh, and Ben, and they oh it was uh, uh, Dave Smith. And so Dave Smith, um, shout out to Dave Smith. If you're not a fan of Dave Smith, check out <laughs> part of the problem uh, uh, podcast. Uh, and he was just saying that he really likes Candace, and that uh, he sees how a lot of people think that she's like a troll and, and and sees her that way. But there's definitely a difference between uh, trolling and uh, culture jamming, as as Tim Pool would call it. And I, I think the something like the uh, the White Lives Matter shirt. Uh, uh, that that she wore with uh, with uh, Kanye. Um, yes, it was meant to troll, but it was also meant to send a message. And then the, the this new th I don't well I don't know. Well, how it's fun to break the internet. You know, we all yeah, want to be Kim yeah. K in well, whatever field we're in. <laughs> yeah, and and what's 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 breaking the internet right now? I don't know how old it is. Maybe uh, uh, it's 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 still only on TikTok. I haven't seen it anywhere else. But uh, uh, the soft guy era. Have you uh, seen this? No. What is this? Teach me. So, all, teach me all the things. A, you know, there's obviously the 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 endless stream of uh, uh, women being like, uh, you know, if you don't pay me for this and that, you're not even taking me out on a date and sprinkle, sprinkle oh, okay. and I, all that kind of stuff. And so now a bunch of dudes are being like, yo, she hit me up and asked me if I'm uh, uh, asked me if I'm hungry and didn't send me any money for for uh, uh, food. Drizzle, drizzle. We, we I'm in my soft guy era. We're not, I'm not <laughs> doing this. And, and it's just flipping around. And it's it's yes, it's trolling. 
but it's culture jamming in the sense that it is sending a message or a meme as a, you know, not like a meme as in right, a picture, right. a meme as in Richard Dawkins uh, 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 coined it in uh, 1971, but just a way to, to said, uh, send a complex idea in a very uh, short amount of time. It, it, it's just, it's so perfect because a lot of women are getting really mad. Like, oh, you're a beta, you're a woman, you wanna do this. And it's like, yep, it's eight burners. Like, oh, it's cringe. That's the <laughs> point, that's the point. Y'all are cringe. Y'all are cringe. It, the soft guy era only comes from the 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 hot uh, hot girl, hot city girl. Right, right. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, do you think that it's effective then to 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 do some of that stuff? Absolutely. Like if you it, even if you ha so if you have, I guess is your opinion that if you have the right the intention to affect change in some way, sort of using those tactics of understanding media and humor or whatever it is to or like rage baiting and you know in whatever right. way yeah if you're just trying to piss people off then like i mean all right if it's gonna be <laughs> funny and you're not hurting anybody then we all love right. a joke but <laughs> if you're actually trying to send a message that like hey you know with with the soft guy era thing it's it's meant to say hey women you're you're, you're getting too out of control it's not everybody of course but we all know why uh, 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 why we all understand what the soft guy era that i just explained even though you didn't see a video you know exactly what it is Right. And so the, the the fact that it is a again a meme, it it, it allows men who felt like they uh, uh, don't appreciate that that uh, uh, mentality from the women that do have it. Now there's a way that gets through, and it's not right. Like, oh well, it's giving broke. Um, uh, you're a loser. Um, you're a beta. Uh, who hurt you? That's just it's mm, chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. Yeah, no, that's for sure. And what do you think about like one of the things I'm seeing on on Twitter lately? Like I said, I just kind of started being more active and saying my opinions because I feel free. I I don't have a lawsuit like, hanging over my head, and I don't have to walk on eggshells. And it's so much more fun to be on the internet and just be yourself. I I think that the people that try to curate too much of a persona and it's like it it'll never work for you so if you that's what you're doing. Do you still have uh, people or entities or whatever that you're worried about uh, uh, hearing what you're saying? Are you free? No, like no, I, no, I'm free like a bird. I just think that so, okay, just this Crowder situation, like obviously something that I'm very, I'm never going to change my stance on is that people should not use the media to twist a narrative to take somebody down if the narrative isn't really 100% the truth with with facts and receipts and all the things like my viewpoint is that if somebody is really as bad as you say, then take them down fair and square. Yeah. Like you don't need to twist a narrative. Mm -hmm. Like if I was really the wicked witch of the West, Taylor would not have been able, it would not have needed to, you know, take all these sources off record or, you know, or whatever, um, unnamed sources to take me down. It's like you would take, real names and you would have the receipts and you would point out to, okay, this is what she did that was fraudulent. Here are the invoices, whatever it was. Here are the contracts. Like, yeah, it takes longer to do something that way. And obviously she wouldn't have been able to do it in that situation. But I think there are situations where it's like, yeah, it's going to take longer to get all the documents, to get all everything that you need. The problem is that we're living in a world where there is, the news is moving so fast. So even for example, um, I've been watching it with um, a lot of people that I, I like, like even Tim Pool and, and um, you know, just people. I think he was even Dave Smith. Maybe I watched his thing on the Crowder situation. The problem is these hosts understand that they have to put out relevant content within the the time frame of when it's popular. Right. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, even I watched a two hour and 20 minute video yesterday of Nala Ray to really understand, you know, before I make an opinion on something. Do you think that a popular host is going to they're going to either pay somebody to go and like tell me the, the tidbits that you picked mm -hmm. up and maybe that person, you know, how qualified is that person to really understand everything that's coming in order to give that host the, the accurate sort of summary of thing, everything? Right? 
Yeah, I did. Yeah, but you know, I, if you don't watch it, you don't get everything from it. Yeah, because I, I, I covered I, in general last night, my whole thing was about inconsistency and talking about a lot of different things. Like I said, I usually just focus on one thing, uh, but I, I brought a, a bunch of stuff in and um, I was talking about that, but I didn't really, you know, my, my thing wasn't really about her specifically. It was just about like, why, why does she just automatically get a pass? Why is she automatically on the Daily Wire? I'm not saying that that I know her that she maybe she did change her life but it just seems a little too much like the trans self ID stuff to just be like you're a Christian now oh okay yeah, oh yeah. my goodness so amazing <laughs> and uh, you know I got I mean there was definitely people who agreed but I also got a, a, a I and other people got a lot of pushback saying that no that's unchrist like and and this and that and whatever and you're I, like well I'm an atheist so <laughs> yeah well definitely but I'm really yeah. unbiased here <laughs> well I, I mean the I, I it's I wish it was that simple, but the problem mm -hmm. is that because Christianity is such a big part of conservatism um, and maybe it, it, it's it's uh, uh, less so now, but it's still there that the the you know, the dogmatic ideology of anything can't be a, a, a question. And that I think right. is the problem with both sides. Both sides have an idea that cannot be questioned, whether it's uh, the existence of, of God, religion, Christianity, or something in that realm, or that you can uh, change your sex or gender. If you're not willing to admit that, okay, maybe those entire ideas are wrong, not admitting that they are wrong, but accepting that there's a possibility right. that those could be wrong. If you're not there, then there's no conversation to be had. And that's what, like for me, I want to be proven wrong. Like, I really wanted to watch that Nala video and be like, you know what? I jumped the gun. I shouldn't have, you know, maybe maybe there's something in the video that was like, you know what? Oh, my gosh. She was, you know, abused as a child. And like this, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what I was waiting for. I was waiting sort of like for the ball to drop. And perhaps she didn't express that stuff. But it was just you have to, you can't like gaslight yourself. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. I know pattern recognition. I worked right. with influencers. I worked with a lot of influencers that were complete sociopaths. And I, you know, it's like, and if I feel like, and I am Christian, it's like, I feel God put me through that so that I could recognize. And maybe, I mean, why did God put me through that? In my mind, I'm like, okay, it's because he wants there to be somebody with a rational point of view to sort of like decode like the influencer whisper, you know, like that, like some people can understand what dogs are thinking. Like I, I feel like I can understand what, influen <laughs> what, what influencers are thinking because I know what they're like, what drives them, you know, in order to, I think, really understand them, you have to understand what drives them and it's clicks and, and shares and going viral and all these things. Um, but what I found to be, I guess I, I'm now sort of awakened to even a new element in this social media political sphere is that when I just took one stance on on Crowder, not based upon what he said to his wife in a ring cam video. I mean, it's funny because I actually Chrissy Mayer was in Vegas and she did a stream a year ago about that Steven Crowder situation. And what I, I guess what I said, somebody was telling me, they're like, yeah, watch it back, is that, yeah, this guy acts like a complete narcissist. But one thing to realize is that Yashar Ali is a piece of poop. Yep. <laughs> I don't like him. And he is notoriously someone that I don't trust. So just the fact that he released the footage is why is everybody ignoring that? And so and so when I talked about this opinion, which I thought it's like based on facts, it's not based on a, a personal bias. It's based on experience because I do know how this industry works. I basically was shut down the moment by a po prominent like Twitter influencer uh, who I was previously friendly with who has a big following and always gets tweeted back by Elon Musk and everything. So I'm like, okay, this is someone that I should be friends with. I mean, whatever, not even because of her following, but just because I, I, I thought she was funny and we had a lot of the same views or whatever. And then I, I say one thing that's not in, in line with, if, with how she thinks. And, you know, she messages me and essentially says like, Oh, well, why don't you just talk to Pearl since you, you know, for first she was like, oh, join a stream with me, all this stuff. Even though I have a small, you know, I have 50, a small account, 50,000 or I don't know what I have, 30,000. And she's like, uh, but she wanted me on the stream before she, so it didn't matter that I only had 30,000 followers or whatever when, when I was on the same side as her. So she, I guess she's willing to platform someone who sounds like they have a cogent, uh, 
opinion and who probably will be taken seriously because they're not force her exactly oh. wait hang on let me oh lost the little video the struggle uh, stream. yeah hey guys, i guess all my donations camera. come with a treat for morty hit up ari or hit up myself <laughs> and no hit up ari hit up ari don't, don't yeah no either ari. one yeah um too hot for tv and and it was just like a small thing right but but when when i changed my opinion and i i literally stayed up all night to because I wanted to make the video and put it out before Gerald um, and the Crowder team put their video out because I didn't want anybody to think like, OK, she's just basically mirroring whatever they're going to say about mm -hmm. this situation. I wanted people to realize that I was coming at it from like, oh, I actually I actually looked at this wrong. You know, I just consumed the information quickly and moved on with my day because I already had wrong. sort of a bias. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Um, and then when she re responded and I was like, well, just join, you know, I'm going to do a space about this. And I started the space and I sent it to her and she was like, first of all, it was like, okay, well, invite Pearl. And I'm like, okay, that was kind of a dig because I guess I know a lot of people don't like Pearl. And she, oh, she goes, why don't you invite Pearl? I'm like, okay, maybe that was kind of rude. But I was like, well, why don't you just join? I really like, I want to know what chord I struck. And if I'm wrong, I, I want to understand because obviously you guys are part of my peer group and I want to be liked in my peer group. Right. right. Um, but I'm not going to change my right. ethical standards and, and, and talking about basically spreading information that I don't believe in just because I want to stay in the friend group or, you know what I'm saying? I want to be accepted. Yeah. I want to be amplified by this person. And, um, and then ultimately she <laughs> didn't even tell me, she's just, you got everything wrong about this without telling me what I got wrong. And then, swiftly unfollowed me and hasn't spoken to me since. And I'm just like, you know, oh, and she was like, I'm not joining your space with 20 followers or with 20 people. And I, that to me, I was like, wow, you know, the, the, okay. So this is the same thing as platforming. It's the same thing yep. New York times did. It's yep. we're not going to platform you because we, cause, cause you're friends with the people we don't like, or, you know what I mean? Or you have an opinion yeah, guilty by association. That's not right. And yeah. I will stand and, by that and call it out because it's well, bad behavior. And that creates that that definitely creates a need for there to be uh, a, a different type of uh, of relationship that you have with people that you are are working with. And, and uh, um, you know, especially like if you're collabing with someone and like there's a you have to understand that it, it, it's not your best friend that you grew up with. And it's right. also not necessarily like some professional only but there's a there's a middle ground where you have to understand like oh, okay i gotta always you know i trust people but i don't really know people and at the end of the day uh -huh. there's definitely people out here who who will throw you under the bus at the drop of a hat for for you know a couple uh, uh, a couple extra followers and um um it it, it, it yeah it, it's odd it's but that's why i do think that it's it's so you were asking me earlier about like um uh like tucker carlson and and mm -hmm. ben shapiro and all that stuff like i actually think Tucker Carlson is like based and I, I am biased in that situation because going on his show like really helped me. I mean, it it shared my story to millions of people. And my mentor, who actually is a liberal black guy that works at Disney, a high up position, one of the most like knowledgeable. He's like he reminds me of a. Uh, um, like remember uh, Morgan Freeman and like Bruce Almighty, he's like God, yeah. but for like the Hollywood, like he tells me everything I need to know about Hollywood, and nice. he's just so patient and 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 smart. And anyway, I just I adore him. And he he was like when he saw everything going, he's like, you need to go, like you have to go on Tucker. I mean, he goes, that you you need to just go on there. He goes, it's okay, you know, because people were saying don't go on Tucker because people are gonna look at you, you know, they're gonna say she's a right winger. And I said, well, this story isn't political, but regardless of that, my point is that, that anyway. Yeah, exactly. I I am biased towards him, but I've seen him in situations and you can tell that he's confident. And that's why people like him, I think, because he even the people that hate him, they kind of like to watch him. But then there's people that, you know, I think are like those actions of that particular person just showed me that like this person really is in it for the self gratification, the fame, because I don't think that, you know, it, it'd be one thing if I was like always coming at things in bad faith. Like, you know, I think while I think that some of the things that Pearl says are 
um, smart and uh, well thought out. A lot of the stuff she says is like meant to piss people off. Yeah. Like women should not vote. But here's my view on that. It's like, okay, we all know that the laws are not going to change so that women can't vote. So the fact that she's saying that is like, don't get so Maybe. like upset about it. Just laugh about it because she's yeah. obviously trying to trigger you. It's just, it's a, it's a tactic and it I'm works. not going to fall for it. But, um, you know, the fact that like people are upset because they see that she's, um, tweeting me and, you know, it's, it just makes me realize that I'm going to stay true to myself. I'm always going to give someone the benefit of the doubt. If somebody is friendly to me and respectful, I, of course, I'm going to be friendly and respectful back. If somebody's disrespectful to me, I'm going to try my hardest not to go crazy Latina and just like, you know what I mean? Move that, like get them out of my, of my zone. But right. if my goal was just to be popular and an influencer, maybe I would just suck up to that person right. and say, okay, well, I, I'm going to stop tweeting about Crowder. No, because I feel like the reason that I was bestowed this experience of the media and the influencer world is so that um, I could help, you know, society maybe in whatever way I can by yeah. exposing, hey, because here's the big problem. And tell me what you think about this is that um, if you if we continue to reward this uh, way of getting attention by lying, manipulating the truth and um, uh, what's it called? Uh, being like feigning victimhood. Mm -hmm. That continues to grow. There's no accountability for it. And then people who are watching are like, well, that clearly works. So works. I'm going to copy it. And then it's just this cycle of bad behavior. And yes, we do need to just also amplify positive messages. But the problem is everybody knows it doesn't work. Everybody knows that a fair story isn't going to get the clicks. I mean, unless you frame it in a real, you know what I mean? And it's sad because I love, I mean, I wish we could all be re-inspired by sort of like the, the, you know, what is it like upworthy, um, era for me, it was like, you know, these kind of like inspirational clickbait stories. Yeah. And now I look at that and I'm like, Oh, well, how much of that was like liberal, you know, like propaganda, but yeah. it's like, we also like feel good things, but for some reason, especially on Twitter and, and with politics, the feel good stuff doesn't seem to work. Hmm. I, I, I definitely hear what you're saying. And I will, what three four days ago i would have completely agreed with you but uh, uh shout out to uh my boy guam tech shout out to guam tech he uh, uh we were talking in uh the after party of uh, uh, my stream the other day uh when i uh debated a a christian dude and i i was thinking that i didn't do well and i was maybe getting too uh, uh upset and debate bro -y and whatever uh but the other day i uh, uh did a members only stream where i watched it back and i'm like hold on wait a minute like i i was he's the, what what and it, it just what made you think that you were doing bad his reaction or well yes the fact that he i did definitely get uh heated at moments um, and I did, you know, throw in some, some underhanded jabs, but it was, <laughs> I, I, in the moment. Well, you're an entertainer too. We all know that like, it, you got to entertain a little bit. Yeah. Well, but in the moment I perceived that as like, okay, I shouldn't have done that. Where in reality, yeah. Okay. I, I could have gone without doing that, but it was certainly justified. And so it's just a, a different perspective, but mm -hmm. the, 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 the point being that you're going to like, people are going to hate you. If you have something to say, people right. are going to hate you because pe unless it's exactly what they think, then they, they, they then they're going right. to get mad. And so well, and if you're speaking to everyone, this is like a marketing thing. And everybody knows in advertising is like if you're speaking to everyone, you're speaking to nobody. So you're going to have to pick a lane. That. Yeah, I love that. And uh, yeah, and that, uh, that's the thing. So but to, in the time between when I did the debate and I watched back the debate, I was kind of not being hard on myself, but but you know, just thinking about it in the sense that like, okay, this is something I need to work on so on and so forth. And not that, again, not that I, I was perfect. There definitely is stuff that I needed to work on. But the point being that, uh, again, people are going to hate you uh, uh, regardless. You just have to be, you, you stand on business, you be who you are, the right people will find you. And uh, uh, the, the feel good stuff, uh, or, or rather, the, the the opposite of that the the, the attention seeking the victimhood uh uh shout out to guam tech i think it has a shelf life i think it's going to uh you know eventually you know s spiral into insanity and something's gonna happen and then everybody's <laughs> gonna uh, you know be like all right all right who's well, who's actually real out here 
here's and this is I guess this is what I got criticized for is the whole Nala thing. It was like because my thought is like, okay, if if I can if I expose what I perceive to be the Jareds of the world or the uh, Nala's of the world, Nala, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't necessarily think Nala's like uh, doing, she's not like hurting anybody right now. Like, right. So the only way that Nala, if she's being disingenuous, hurts people is if people get behind her and then she turns out to be totally the opposite. And then they're disillusioned by the fact that they believed in her or whatever. But I think if you expose the things, the people, then maybe there's going to be people that um, if you expose them with the intention that if you got it wrong, you're going to immediately retract and publicly say, I got this wrong and knowing and totally being okay and actually happy to do that genuinely, um, then exposing these, these people and these behaviors is good for society because then if somebody's like, oh, I'm going to do the thing, then they're like, oh, no, well, if I do that, then Ari might like, yeah. she uh, might get me. And, and I feel a, like, what's wrong with that? And people are mad at me about it. They're like, well, yeah. don't there's criticize a, her. There's a, there's a huge difference between, uh, uh, well, if we're just talking about this uh, situation with, with knowledge specifically. There's a huge difference between uh, a healthy skepticism and, uh, 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 let's say, cynicism. Like to go in and say, oh, she's probably bull, uh, BSing and, and, and whatever. That's cynicism. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, maybe, but you don't know right. her. People right. Did you even watch any interview or anything? Yeah. Right. But to say, okay, well, I don't know. So until I see something to verify that this is real, I'm going to uh, uh, keep my opinion of this person is doing the, you know, uh, whatever the face with it sticking out and that, that whole thing. And that, that's who you are. That's who you are. Maybe you changed in your mind, but until I see something, then I, I, I'm not willing to, to accept that. And again, I don't even have a, a, a dog in the race because right. I feel, you know, my issue with, with uh, uh, people accepting her so easily not, uh, isn't just that it, it perfectly mirrors the self ID stuff with uh, uh, LGBT, but I do think that Christianity as, as for now, even though I would like to, uh, again, I don't want to take religion away from anybody, but I do want to build a society where religion is just not needed anymore. Maybe in, you know, it, it'll take time, but uh, mm -hmm. nobody's taking away your religion. But I think <laughs> in the meantime, Christianity is a good thing for people who are not either willing or able to do the philosophical work to build their own moral structure. With that being said, if, if, we, if there's people like Nala who without any verification can just be brought into the club, does that not water down what Christianity is at its core because if it's just hey mm -hmm. I said I, I I say the things and I'm a good person if that's all Christianity is then hell yeah I'm, I'm a Christian too I don't believe in God or Jesus or the resurrection or or free will or any of those things but if that's all Christianity is then I'm a Christian too you know where I'm coming from yeah well I I think it's like if you take away the triggering aspect of religion, I think, and you look at this as, I don't know if this is a good example, but like, let's say that you have a friend that is an alcoholic and decides to go to AA and you, he tells you that he's going to AA and you're like, you celebrate that and you're like, how can I support you? All the things. But then you see, every time you see that person, they're, they're sitting at the bar and you're like, what is he doing here at the bar? Like why so soon, you know, maybe he's not drinking, but like, why is he here at the bar? <laughs> you know, and you're maybe not, you're with other friends and you're like, so you're not super paying attention to what he's, but mm -hmm. then are you, is it not okay as a human being to be skeptical then of like, well, I don't really know if he's, if he's actually going to AA, look, I'm not going to hate on him because this was his decision, but also I'm not going to, every time I see him be like, I'm so happy about your AA, man. Like, right. because you see him at the bar and this is how I feel about Nala. It's like, okay, you've expressed that you have, um, an addiction to attention. You have probably, um, a, a love addiction, right? I'm not a, a therapist, but it's just, to me, it's, it's obvious. Like you know, when you need sense. that validation from men, I watched her video. She said that she it, it, she thought that she was going to be coming back to God and that her parents were going to accept her with open arms. And that is not the case. Now, usually, like just from my experience with my parents, it's like 
I used to get parking tickets all the time. And now when I, this was like when I was in high school, I'm 40. And when I go home, my dad's like, no, you can't take the car because you're going to get a parking <laughs> ticket. You know what I mean? So like your parents are the ones that know you. And so, you know, if they're, if they know, like, if, I'm not saying this is true, but if, if they know that Nala is, um, a narcissist or, you know, a manipulator, and they've seen that she's come to God, maybe they're, they themselves are like, let me, let's take a beat here. Yeah. And if you actually prove that, that this is a real thing and not just because you met a guy on TikTok that is super Christian and you're just like morphing into whatever he wants so that you get the love that you want. Um, I don't think this is mean. I think this is like common sense, right? So this yep. is somebody that has a love addiction and, and then right away you're back at the bar ordering attention. Right. I mean, take a break if you're, yeah, a and, a and, and by the way, I went through the guy's, uh, TikTok. If you really love the guy, why don't you say, you know what? I'm not ready to talk right now, but, uh, Michael Knowles, why don't you interview my husband? Because he is actually making change and he's been expressing his Christianity since 2021. And he can tell you the story of how we met and how we, how he forgave me from my past. I mean that to me, and I get it. Not everybody's perfect, but she also described that she's a very good marketer and mm -hmm. that would be a good marketing decision. It would be a good humanity decision. It would be good for to, to give all the flowers to your husband who actually has been walking in faith and walking and doing the talk. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, and oh, so, me too, me too. So why, I mean, she mentioned him briefly, but it's, I mean, and they're on, on their social media together, but does that make sense? I mean, it's like, Absolutely. If, so I'm going to give everybody, an, common sense. I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to make fun of my skinny arms, but I do have a tattoo here mm -hmm. oh, wrong way. and it says, believe nothing except that anything is possible the ultimate uh, expression of skepticism believe nothing except that anything is possible yes i know i'm puny leave me alone um and, <laughs> and i don't i don't even remember where i i thought of this but the and i mean maybe somebody else thought of it but i definitely thought of it independently uh at least as well so i'm taking credit for it <laughs> and it, it just came from you know when i was uh moving away from religion i uh you know i was in school i was uh, studying psychology i was studying uh, uh philosophy and i just realized that there's other uh, ways that explain you know that which is bigger than us and it could be this it could be that and so i'm just gonna say uh, i don't know and uh yeah this line of believe nothing believe nothing everything you've ever been told very likely is a, a, a bs at some level <laughs> so i don't i don't know if you're uh, if you guys are at all familiar with uh, rene descartes he's the i think therefore i am guy and and you know his whole thing was uh, was exactly that like what if he was thinking what if there's some evil demon that everything i think i know is just a projection from that evil demon how can I make sure that I, I can know something for certain? And so he strips down everything, everything, everything that he, he knows. And it gets down to, well, do I even exist? And the idea being, well, if I'm thinking, then there must be a thinker. And that's the only thing that we can know for sure. So everything else, it could be possible. But what do they say? Trust, nothing. trust, but verify, I exactly. think is like a thing. And um, the other thing too, that I found that I felt like I needed to speak out about the situation because like I said, I don't really think that in general, there's not a person that is being right now. I can't think of the person that Nala is hurting by basically coming out as a Christian influencer. But here, but here's the thing. I, it took two hours. I was watched the thing for two hours and I was waiting the whole time to find out like, what is her intention? I, I think it's important to know what are people's intentions? Like my intention making content, I want to sort of, ungatekeep what I know about the entertainment industry uh, because I'm not a talent agent anymore. So when I was a talent agency, like you, you don't want to share all these secrets because that's your secret sauce. Well, so now I'm not doing that. So I'm going to share all these things. And um, I want people to get treated fairly. I want us to support influencers that are actually doing things in good faith, like all these things, right? This is what my goal. So what is Nala's goal? Is it to just money, money. be a different kind of influencer or money. is it, is it to bring just other people to God, or is it specifically to bring OF models, um, you know, to, to God, what is the, the thing? And it took so long and I didn't really feel like she had one like anecdote story, whatever to, to say 
you know, this is this is why you shouldn't you shouldn't do this thing. She just said I had a hard time growing up. I had a bad relationship and that I was doing the uh, like, you know, the, the corn side of it. But before that, she also sort of brushes over the fact that she's doing these um, lewd texting and uh, sending explicit images. And, but she just said, experience. yeah. And she's like, well, I just did that, you know, from the comfort of my own home brushes past it. And I mean, I have I have a friend who was in the adult industry and uh, she now does OF. And I was asking her because a lot of most people that do this for a living, they hire chatters. So the chatters are usually men and uh, the men are, you know, going back and forth with with uh, you know that. Gents, with, keep your damn money. Yeah. You're talking to They're a going. Dude. Yep. They're talking to a dude. And I always knew that conceptually, but I'd never seen like the back end of the platform or whatever. And so I asked my friend, I was showing me. And one of the things she said is like, she, ha she has to have chatters because, because of the fact that she came from the adult world, people are, have seen, they have already seen like very explicit things from her. So when they, when they ask for pictures and when they do the chats, they're like, they're crazier. Like they're, they're willing, it's different than when they're talking to maybe the Instagram model turned OF girl, they are more, um, raunchy, degrading, hardcore. And she's like, honestly, the the part about taking pictures with my clothes off, it's kind of fun. She's like, I get dressed up. I do the thing. I'm with somebody I trust that's taking the pictures. Like that is not uncomfortable. But I, she, she told me, she's like, I cannot do the texting part because psychologically it's damaging to me and it's hurtful mm -hmm. and it would bring me a lot of pain. Imagine and I remember, that. I remember her telling me that. And so that's just like a general story. Why, why didn't Nala, if her goal is to get people to not do OF, why didn't she just tell a very basic story like that, which by the way, I'm not even in the industry and I've already heard several. Um, and so that to me seemed disingenuous. Is it because she doesn't want her boyfriend to be, or her new husband to be thinking about what she had done in the past? Maybe this guy is very naive. I don't know. He obviously doesn't know. But what, he forgave oh, her. <laughs> but what he doesn't even know what he's forgiving her for, right? Because he didn't. So like if I were in her shoes, I definitely wouldn't want my boyfriend to know like that I had been degraded and shamed. But if you're married to someone like you want them, you really if they're going to accept you, you want them to know all your, you know, I guess like the things that have hurt you oh, and you damaged dirt. you. Yeah. And I mean, so you definitely don't want them to find out five years into the marriage and be like, oh, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I am out. This I is what it out. is like. Yeah. And so, and the other thing I thought about is like, if she did have chatters, then you are like two steps removed, right? It's like you get to do, which is clear. That's what she liked to do is the dressing up and the characters. Mm -hmm. And that's the fun part, but you're not doing, not that I'm saying like, oh, she should have done the dirty part, but it's like, I would feel a lot, you know, when my friend told me that I felt bad for her and I think rightfully so I'm like, oh, I never even thought about that. Another story that I told yesterday on, on uh, you know, my text tweets don't really get as, men, as much uh, views as when I like add like a really good thumbnail. But but this was one story. I had a friend that was going to law school and uh, she was working at a strip club at night in Vegas before I lived here. And we went to dinner and uh, I, I was like venting about my sales job. And I told her, you know, oh, well, if I don't like land a, one of these pitch meetings, you know, if I, if I don't close one of these pitches soon, I'm going to I'm going to have to join you out here in Vegas, you know, joking with her. And she <laughs> goes, she looks at me and she's like, well, Ari, your job is uh, or my job is 100 times worse uh, as a sales salesperson. And I kind of like in my mind, I rolled my eyes at like, oh, you're a salesperson now. Like, how hard is it to walk around in a thong? And she goes, yeah, I mean. Uh, imagine, um, you know, your, your clients, basically you're approaching them while you're completely naked and vulnerable and, uh, you approach them and this is you from see, the strip club? You're yeah. About? Yeah. And she goes, and, and you, and you see them like, you know, drag their eyes up and down and then they land on the part of your body that they don't like, or maybe it's your face. And then they swiftly go like this and say, no, thank you. Ooh. And I Ooh. was like, wow. Oh. Like I never thought about it like that. And I'm like, wow, I actually realized, yeah, she is like in a sales position and you know, sales, you get turned down all the time, but imagine what that does to based your self-confidence yeah. based yeah. on your naked body. Jeez. And it like gave me chills. And I literally, 
I felt so horrible. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean like, I didn't know. I didn't realize that. So, I mean, why wasn't there one story like that? And yeah. that took a two minute story to tell me that story. And I immediately yeah. was like, I never want to be a stripper. You and, know? and while I was setting up my stream, I was, I was watching your stream. And just from what I, just from what I saw, I mean, you were going for six hours. So I, I was watching <laughs> uh, before and after I used to do that when I started, I was like, Oh, we're yeah, going to do right? Why like, not? Well, Two hours, I'm done. <laughs> but um, uh, we usually go three, but whatever. Um, and yeah, it just seemed. I, and actually, I think it was somebody in your chat. I, I saw somebody like giving uh, uh, straight uh, chat GBT answers, and it's like this is exactly what I would expect to hear. And again, it was just a couple minutes uh, uh, while I was setting up, but this is exactly what I would ex expect to hear from somebody who was faking that they were doing all this. It's like, I could do this. Oh my God, one day I, you know, I was living a debaucherous life and then, you know, I, I saw a, a light and there's something spoke to me. And then, uh, I, you know, somebody, uh, my, uh, I guess the, the, the husband's involved in my husband. He said, you should read this verse. And I, I just, he, he opened it and he showed it to me and I read it and I was just like, wow, it's something washed over me. And I realized everything and so on and so on. And so, and it's, it, it's so basic. Like if you've ever watched a movie, about somebody giving testimony in church. That's what it seemed like to me. Yes, you're absolutely right about that. And I also think that like, why are we, why are we being told to like gaslight ourselves? Like if our instinct is something doesn't seem right about this, like, let's just, you know, dig into it. And again, I'm not sitting, I'm not going on Dogma. Twitter to like call her a hoe and, and, and terrible words. I like, for example, I'm not sitting here being like, Oh, you used to like Bernie Sanders. Like I can't even <laughs> talk to you. But I think it's like if and, and I would whatever if you like Bernie Sanders, whatever. But the thing is, is that you're actively making content that makes me believe because I can see the content that you're making. Like, yeah. oh, OK, I can trust this guy because you're you're talking about. And, and those are the tests because she said, I want to I, I will never take it back what happened because now I can give my testimony. The thing is, like, you're not supposed to give the testimony like two days after you quit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, maybe you could go on your own social media channels, but to go on a press right. tour it's like well maybe you're selling a little bit of a uh, snake oil especially when you have a husband that literally is a way better example and, and has I, in my opinion i just looked at his stuff and i'm like it, i think he would be able to give much better testimony that would be believable uh and maybe just as much clickbait you could you could turn was, it into the clickbait. Yeah, i was gonna say if you just have her there and yeah. you're talking to him that would still yeah. get just as many clicks and and it's 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 very confusing why uh, you know the, the the daily wire would 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 do that and it's not the first time and it's just do you how much of this are you uh, really trying to help people versus you know right. just just you know just the getting game. the clicks yeah exactly and and we all play the game there's nothing like like i was saying before there is a balance you know there's gonna be clickbait and there's gonna be uh, uh you know uh, flashy thumbnails and stuff that, that's yeah. the way it works if you're not playing that game you're not your, your channel's not growing but you the the the, the difference is uh, uh what is behind that thumbnail are you actually delivering something of value and yeah. uh again the the idea that uh, uh, so many people in uh, the conservative movement can be so easily swayed and just be, because of dogma that, I, again, is one of the biggest uh, uh, problems with, I, I think dogma is a very, very bad thing. The, the the fact that you can how would you describe idea. dogma you're you're the you're the 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 college scholar yeah, so, so <laughs> dogma it just means a a a claim or a truth that you uh, 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 okay. uh that's incontrovertible that oh, okay, there, okay, there, okay. There, there's no uh there's no world whether if you're on the right there's no world where god doesn't exist that christianity isn't the best if you're on the left there's oh, no I see. world where where uh, we're actually questioning if, if uh, somebody can be transgender, that that's uh, that's a priori, that's axiomatic, that that's our starting point, mm -hmm. and 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 so that's not good because then that every idea that you have can be questioned, but this one is is, is saved, and then when you're basing everything on that one uh, protected belief, then you don't know if everything else uh, uh, is is uh, built on faulty ground because even if it makes sense again internally then the the uh, uh, objectively if the the premise the uh, the basic premise that there's a man in the i know it m most of you don't believe that but just to, <laughs> for for you know to believe that there's a man in the sky or to believe that a man can uh, transform into a female I, I i don't know where we go from there right and so just the notion yeah. of having dogma in the first place not to say that you can't believe things but be willing to question them well and the other thing too is that i feel 
like you, you know, people that are good at marketing, they know the, their audience, right? Let's talk about Nala is not dumb. I mean, she was able to make a lot of money figuring out how the platform works, how to, you know, whatever. And, and that's not to say that the men on there are right or wrong. Like, I don't want to even get into that conversation because that's not, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't think that 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 industry is good for for healthy relationships and human beings, but whatever, that's like that's not the hill. I'm yeah. not, I'm not going <laughs> to die on that hill. The thing is, though, is that if you're if you're at, if you're out there saying like I'm I want to affect change and I want you know people to not do OF and I want people to uh, you know take my testimony and be inspired by it. That's why I brought Tay onto the show yesterday is because I'm like I want to know if an OF person would actually uh, like be drawn in by this and. First of all, I don't see any, um, most of the people that do uh, OF, adult, they're they're not watching Daily Wire, number one. Number two, they're not uh, going to watch a two, out, two and a half hour deal where maybe like the very end, it was like, you know, I have this regret, but it, it's still, she was describing like having a bad relationship, having to go to church, all these things that just a normal person might have to deal with. So it's like, we don't really feel that bad for you because everybody has these yeah, problems. Right? You, you know what I mean? Million dollars. Yeah, exactly. And so if you actually want to influence people, you have to be smarter than that. And I think that, um, so I just thought it was, it was interesting. I guess that really is my point in talking about this stuff. It's like, if we want to affect change and we have to understand the psyche of somebody that's, considering the OF world or in it and like what it would take to convince them to, you know, do something else. And for me, I don't, me personally, I don't think going at it as like, you need to be saved by God. God, you know, loves you. And I really Jesus. just, even if, even if Jesus is the reason why you want to get them out, I don't think that that's the vehicle for getting them out. Like for me, if I, if I was in knowledge shoes, I would literally, um, you know, maybe I would take a year and really change my life so that the, the OF girls that saw me, you know, a year, two years later are like, wow, I, I want to, I want to be like her because she seems genuinely happy, genuinely changed. And there's a but, tangible thing to be that, that is what I want, that there's a thing there. So like right now, it's just an, yeah, right now it's just an idea. And it, I, I don't think that most uh, 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 women on, on OF are unaware of Christianity. Yeah, I don't yeah, think that's exactly. the case. So again, exactly. it's like, what are we doing here? And, and so because like, I know she's a good marketer, like I, be, I really believe in Nala. Like I believe that if she really wanted to, to change hearts and minds and it was selfless that, like, like I said, she would have had her, her husband on, she would have taken the time. I think they, I mean, I don't know, but from what I saw on social media, they only have pictures together starting in January of this year. So if they met on TikTok live and then, you know, hung out for three months and then got married. Like that to me is a red flag. And why yes. are we not allowed to point that out? Oh, because that means you're unchristian or you're giving her a hard time. And it's like, well, you know, she's going to do, do the opposite. Like if I was the OF girl and then this story turns out to be BS, it's gonna be like, ha ha, like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, you guys are trying to fool us. Well, like, I'm gonna stay on OF and make money, bye. Um, versus, you know, if I wanted to genuinely try to get somebody out of the o OF world, I would try to find a business opportunity that was gonna make them the same amount of money. There I would literally, you, know. yeah. I, you know what I mean? I would be like, okay, this is the talent. And I would come to them with the pitch and I'd be like, hey, I think that you're Maybe you don't even say, I think you're better than this because you don't want to look down on yeah, them. Yeah. You want to say, you know what? You are amazing. There's all these amazing qualities about you. This is what you can do with those qualities in a non-adult way. I mean, you could do everything. And this is what I told Taylor. I'm like, you could have a YouTube channel where you just talk to people because you're cool and you're pretty and you're natural and you're no BS. And yeah, it's going to, it'll take a while, but you will eventually build uh, you know, a following and, 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 but it's not the same cookie cutter. It's not just like come over and, and just go and just live stream all day long. Mm. And that in a way at the very end of the interview, that's what Nala was saying. She goes, Oh yeah, we're starting a TikTok agency and we just go live on TikTok all day. And I'm like, well, first of all, what do you need an agency for, for that? Cause an agency gets you brand deals and like gets you mainstream press and all this stuff. So 
it just, the whole thing seemed disingenuous to me from the perspective of somebody that understands not only the industry, not only, you know, uh, the OF world and entertainment and social media. And so to, marketing for people to, and, and all yeah. Stuff. Like, and so for lot, people to look at me and say, yeah, you're doing this in bad faith. There that that even even if it's not like a business opportunity but just like a a, 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 a you know a, a support group or something that uh, that's like uh, these are people who want to uh, uh you know don't have a, maybe don't have a lot of options as to uh, what they uh, uh, can do but don't want to do this but have been doing it for a while and now the again you know you have to learn how to do whatever it is that may, like not everybody on OF is successful so there's there's definitely well um, and it's also it's also that it's like, why go on and brag about the fact that you made 9 million, but when he asks, you know, when he asks you about the TikTok live streaming, you say, I, I make, you don't leave it open-ended. You don't say I make X amount to be realistic. You say, oh, well, you know, not as good as, as uh, OF, but, but it, it's still a good career path. It's just so unconvincing to me that, mm -hmm. and I believe that she's a good convincer. So then it triggers my spidey senses of like, why are you not using what you know how to do to do the thing? Is it because you, it, the, the goal is not what you're telling, you know, what you want us to believe or whatever? Well, here's where I will defend Nala in the sense that I, I mean, there's a lot of people who live lives like Nala, maybe not exactly, and that call themselves Christians that aren't out here uh, 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 preaching anything. And I mean, it's not her show you know you get invited and if you if maybe she is going through this this uh, uh uh this conversion this transformation but the again going back to the you know kind of watering the, the watering down of what christianity is again i i think that it's a a, a, a for now it's a good force like my my uh, uh my dad my dad and i started a uh, uh tattoo removal uh business he's you know he's the uh, uh the guy that does the uh, the laser and everything and nice. there was uh there was somebody who uh you know and you were rebelling you're like i'm just gonna get all the tattoos I'm yep. just kidding. <laughs> well, I had, yeah i have a couple of that you know i had to sacrifice he's like all right okay. well, we need a tester and so oh, just having cool. like a before and after picture we're gonna have you in the nice. office and you walk in and so the one on my leg he, he yeah out in, the, in the middle and it looks cool but uh <laughs> and there, there, so one of the clients was somebody who you know was into drugs and crime and all this stuff and and found religion and 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 uh fixed their life and my dad's like oh you should have him on and i'm like no, why do I <laughs> want to have him on? The only thing that we would have to talk about is, hey, you know that thing that saved your life and made you live a lot better? I think it's fake. Why would I want to take that away from him? I, that's not what. That's not the goal. Right. The goal is to uh, 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 to show that if you are in a uh, uh, a spot where you are like Nala and you want to change your life, that there are there are many different avenues to do that, and that maybe christianity is the right one for you but maybe not and especially mm -hmm. in america i think that that needs to be uh, uh um again the the whole you need jesus thing and again it is a lot better than than uh, it was in previous years but it's still there well you know what i think and and obviously i don't expect her to be honest about this if this is the case but but this is the real situation because I experienced it. When you lose everything or you walk away from something, like for me, I lost my business. And I, when it was like taken away from me so unexpectedly, it's like, I didn't know who I was as a person. I'm like, I'm all, I was Ari influences. I was all about, you know, the influencers. And, and I'm like, I don't even know who I am, what I stand for. Like, I felt like my whole identity was, was ripped away from me, right? And so I feel like when you change careers or, when you have a big life change so you know you have this identity of making weird faces and dressing up all crazy when you're like okay i'm gonna walk away from this you're like okay i need to find myself or uh, you know i need to um have a persona because if i don't have a persona then like what am i marketing right like you right. you're a marketer so you and you want to be successful she says i want to be uh, a leader i'm an entrepreneur I get that because I am that way, right? And I, I, I always want to be doing something. Um, but so what I think is that Nala probably decided she wanted to walk away, and she's like, "Listen, I." She goes, she went to church every day. She said, "I didn't want to go. This is like the main source of my friction with my dad. Is that I felt like the family that was, you know, pretending to be all great and dandy and stand at the front, and I 
But you know what she learned by having to do that? She learned all the scripture. So that is, so, so she's sitting here without a career now. Cause she's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so what do you, of course, what you think about is like, well, what else am I good at? What else do I know? What else is the thing? And so you, you met a guy that's Christian that you love and you, okay, how do I, you know, make a life that I can live with him and we're going to be happy and I'm going to have a career that he respects, whatever. And then you're like, I know all this scripture. So it makes sense for me to be a Christian influencer. Like that is a great business idea. Great. Nala, what you did is you jumped the gun. You, that would have been, you don't even have to tell us that that was your, your strategy, mm. because to me, that is a very, not even a grifty strategy. It's, it's smart because I can't even, I can't talk about religion really because I don't know the scripture. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I just believe this because I do. Uh, and I went to, you know, church. And I just didn't pay attention. But had she done it where she's like, okay. And then, like I said, strategically said, I'm going to hold off on interviews. Cause then you have, then you have two relevant moments in time. Cause you're like, I'm going to go, I'm going to be behind the scenes. I don't want to do the interview yet, but you yeah. can interview my husband. And then Those you come interests. out, I, then you come out a year later and you're like, Bingo. now I'm going to do that. That would have been chef's kiss. Yeah. But because she did it the way she is, she did. It's like, now I'm thinking, well, okay, this is, this is very self-motivated. And yeah. I don't know if you're, you know, narcissistic or, um, you're basically just masking to be, to find that acceptance that you, that you feel like you didn't have growing up. And so anyway, but I don't feel like I'm saying that in bad faith, I think, but just saying it is getting people all triggered and angry yeah. at me. And, but I'm not going to stop saying it. Cause I think that's logical. Oh, yeah. Staying on business. <laughs> so what, what did you, uh, cause I, I still haven't watched it again. I just, I, I do yeah. care enough. Um, what did you, what did you think of where Knowles was coming from? Um, I mean, I feel like he, I didn't really, I felt like he was interjecting a lot of just like historical philosophy type of things. And, um, I, I don't know. I felt I didn't really even, Cause it, I couldn't it even seemed... tell you what I thought his stance was. I think his stance was like, I don't really know a lot about this. I'm happy that you're, you know, a Christian. I don't think I'm not, I don't condone what you were doing, but he didn't like dig into her. And I understand probably why, because you're only like, what did you actually see on OF? Like, how did they talk to you? That would have been something I so think he was had on top or, or yeah, like it had to have come from her because if I think it would have come off very slimy, if he, if he pressed her on the, like, you have to be, you know, somewhat. Which again, begs the question, what are we doing? Why are you doing this in the first place? This is and, a puff piece. Yeah. yeah. And that's what really what, but I'm like, okay, so just so I can be part of the cool kids, am I just supposed to be like, oh, yay. Like, <laughs> I don't know. And so that, that, you know, uh, that comes back to the, the notion of, well, I guess, uh, you know, something, something I think that, uh, you know, especially the, the zoomers are, are missing is just the notion that you're supposed to have a person, like you're supposed to be your own person. You're supposed to have a personality. And it yeah. seems like for so many of them that uh, a gender ideology or a gender identity is the, what they use. Like, yeah, when, when, you know, when I was in, in high school, you were, you were an emo or you were this or you were that. But it wasn't your, your uh, uh, entire identity to the sense where, like, you were no longer the person you were born as. It was just a, a thing you did, and then you grew out of it. And mm -hmm. the, the, that's a, a, a scary notion that, that it could be so easily uh, uh, bestowed upon so many kids. Like, well, that's, and that is really the core of the, of the matter. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Cause I'm sitting here thinking like, why am I so like gung ho about just exposing these things, like calling it, like I see it is because kids want like attention. They are uh, growing up with social media and their dopamine centers. It's like a drug. It really is. Mm -hmm. Like when you get, uh, I read this book about how they make apps, social media apps, and it just talks about how anytime you can gamify something or like, it's like a, it's like going to the casino. It's like, oh, I post and then I get a reward and I need the reward and then I need the reward. And it's, you know, it's built based upon so that you feel like if you don't post more, do more or get more likes that you are craving that dopamine. And so if you hook your brain up to an fMRI machine, whenever you're getting that satisfaction, it's like the same, it's the same part of your brain that's tr triggered when you have, when you have a drug. And so 
I think the problem is that when kids, I don't know what my brand is. I don't know what, like, you know, I want to hang out with the skaters, but I also, you know, like to do cheerleading or, you know, whatever. I don't know what it is, but it's, yeah. and that's the whole part of like figuring out who you are growing up. But if, if it's easier to be like, oh, I identify as this other gender and it's popular and I'm going to get attention, um, you know, it's that, a, that, the, that is, a that is a problem. It's mm -hmm. a, it's that's a, a it's uh, uh, right on the uh, right on the screen, Zippy. Right on the screen. Uh, the uh, it, it's it's insidious in the sense that you know I again not a Christian, but I do uh, uh, take a lot. You know, I was born into uh, the church, all that stuff. And the the demonic nature is that uh, uh, you know the it's easier it's easier to just uh, adopt a gender uh, identity than it is to uh, to to build your own personality. It's easier. To just pick up the Bible and be like, "Yep, this works," than to sit down and and read it and uh, compare it and look at other uh, philosophers and what they have said and apologists and 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 theologians. It, it's a lot easier, and right. that should be that shouldn't be. If like if if I was still a Christian, I would be the type of Christian where again I would have this not cynicism but skepticism that hey, this is a very sacred thing to me. So if you're going to try to, I don't know if encroach is the right word, but if you're going to be uh, try to be part of this, then you need to be part of this. And there's already yeah. so many people who claim to be part of this, who are clearly not, that I, I, I need to, to make sure that this, again, that this sacred thing is, is that the sanctity is, is kept. Yeah, absolutely. I am going to have to jump off because I forgot I had a meeting at, um, Five minutes ago but um i am so excited that we met i hope we can like yes. we should do this more often you are a really just to me cool trustworthy type of person that i think has an open mind and and like i'm really glad you're you're on youtube and doing what you do and i hope you're, you don't you become not underrated because everybody hears about <laughs> you um thank yeah you, i think you, we should you. have more discussions about this stuff uh you know and and ultimately i think it just i i believe in just be yourself on the internet and if you need to apologize or change your opinion great like we should It'll happen. celebrate that and um and so uh yeah but any final thoughts um uh, no i mean I, I yeah this was great i definitely uh, uh think this is a a uh a, a foundation for for uh, future discussions i definitely uh there, there's there's stuff i gotta i gotta have you on my channel and and, and yes i would love brain. to come on and uh yeah but this was great I really, really appreciate you uh, uh, taking the time to uh, uh, hang out and uh, uh, listen. Shout out to the chat. And uh, uh, again, I am Lutch, a.k.a. The Indian Jesus, here to resurrect the second coming of Common Sense live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, and sometimes whenever I feel like it, and uh, uh, clips out every single day. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Make sure you go follow the Indian Jesus and make sure you're following me. I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to end here with my uh, my little video of when I was a vlogger uh, when I was like eight years old. Not really a vlogger because there was no YouTube, but you know, I used to steal my mom's VHS uh, camera and uh, make videos. So here we go. <laughs> And tonight on the ABC News, O.J. Simpson kills one more person. <gasps> oh my God, I can't believe it. O.J. kills another person? I didn't know Minute Maid orange juice could kill people. <laughs> I guess, some, well, what happened here was that um someone poisoned the O.J. and, well, killed somebody. Oh, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time on ABC, the horrible news in the whole world. Thank you. Well, I hope you liked how I did my commercials, you know. I, I'm i going to be a star. I've always been a star, you know. I just have to go to Hollywood, and then I'll just, you know, everybody would be, like, going, Oh, I want your autograph. Oh, I want your autograph. But anyways, see you later. Adios. Ciao. Ha, ha, ha.